If you stay away from problems and noise, turn off the light and put on an earphone, you will have done yourself a favor. Let's begin. Aaron, the Dragon Hunter. Long ago, in a land far away, there lived a brave hero named Aaron. He was known throughout the kingdom as the greatest dragon hunter of all time. Aaron was not born a hero. He had to work hard to become one. His childhood was filled with struggles and challenges, but he never gave up on his dreams. Aaron was born to a poor family, and he was the youngest of five siblings. His parents struggled to make ends meet, and they could barely afford to feed their children. Aaron grew up in a small village at the foot of a mountain. The village was surrounded by dense forests and rugged terrain, which made it difficult for the villagers to farm or hunt. Despite their hardships, Aaron's parents instilled in him a strong sense of hope and determination. They taught him to believe in himself and to never give up on his dreams, no matter how difficult the road may be. Aaron's father was a skilled hunter, and he taught his son everything he knew about tracking, hunting, and survival. Aaron was a quick learner, and he soon surpassed his father in skill and knowledge. As Aaron grew older, he became fascinated with the stories of dragons that roamed the mountains and terrorized the villages. He dreamed of one day becoming a dragon hunter and saving his village from the fierce beasts. Aaron knew that dragon hunting was a dangerous and difficult profession, but he was determined to succeed. Aaron's journey to becoming a dragon hunter was not an easy one. He faced many obstacles along the way, including treacherous terrain, fierce beasts, and dangerous rivals. However, he persevered through it all, never losing sight of his goal. Aaron learned to overcome his fears and doubts and to push himself to new heights. As Aaron's reputation as a dragon hunter grew, he became a legend in the kingdom. People from far and wide came to seek his help in dealing with the dragons that plagued their villages. Aaron never turned anyone away, and he always put the safety of the people first. The story of Aaron the Dragon Hunter is a tale of courage, determination, and self-belief. It is a story that teaches us that anything is possible if we have the courage to pursue our dreams. It is a story that reminds us that even in the face of great adversity, we can overcome our fears and emerge victorious. In the following chapters, we will follow Aaron's journey as he battles dragons, falls in love, and faces the greatest challenge of his life. Chapter 1. The Dragon Hunter's Childhood Aaron was born into a poor family in a small village at the foot of a mountain. His childhood was marked by struggle and hardship, but he never lost his sense of hope and determination. Aaron was the youngest of five siblings, and his parents struggled to provide for their children. They could barely afford to feed them, and life was tough. Despite these challenges, Aaron's parents instilled in him a strong sense of self-belief. They taught him to believe in himself and to never give up on his dreams, no matter how difficult the road may be. Aaron's father was a skilled hunter, and he taught his son everything he knew about tracking, hunting, and survival. Aaron was a quick learner, and he soon surpassed his father in skill and knowledge. As a child, Aaron spent most of his time exploring the mountains around his village. He was fascinated by the natural world and the creatures that inhabited it. Aaron's father encouraged his curiosity, teaching him about the plants and animals that grew and lived in the mountains. Aaron loved to climb trees and scramble up rocky outcrops. He was never afraid of heights or of getting his hands dirty. Despite his love of the outdoors, Aaron was acutely aware of the poverty that surrounded him. He saw how his parents struggled to make ends meet and he knew that he needed to help out in any way he could. Aaron took odd jobs around the village, doing whatever he could to earn a few coins. He delivered messages, ran errands, and helped out at the local market. Aaron's childhood was not an easy one, but it was a happy one. He had a close-knit family and a deep love of the natural world. Aaron's experiences as a child would shape his destiny and set him on the path to becoming the greatest dragon hunter the kingdom had ever seen. Chapter 2. The First Dragon Sighting One day, while Aaron was exploring the mountains, he saw something that would change his life forever. It was a dragon, a fierce beast with scales as black as night. 
Aaron froze in terror as the dragon swooped overhead, its wingspan blotting out the sun. He watched in awe as the dragon disappeared over the horizon, and he knew that he had to learn more about this magnificent creature. Over the next few months, Aaron dedicated himself to studying dragons. He read every book he could find, talked to every expert he met, and spent countless hours observing their habits in the wild. Aaron learned that dragons were highly intelligent creatures, with a fierce sense of independence and a burning desire for freedom. He also learned that they were incredibly dangerous, with sharp teeth, razor-sharp claws, and a breath of fire that could melt steel. Despite the danger, Aaron was captivated by dragons. He was fascinated by their raw power and untamed spirit, and he knew that he had to face his fear and hunt them down. Aaron began to train in earnest, honing his skills as a hunter and building up his strength and endurance. He knew that dragon hunting was not for the faint of heart, but he was determined to prove himself. As Aaron's reputation as a dragon hunter grew, he began to receive requests for help from all over the kingdom. Farmers and villagers were being terrorized by dragons, their crops destroyed and their livestock devoured. Aaron knew that he had to act, and he set out on his first dragon hunt. The hunt was long and grueling, but Aaron was determined to succeed. He tracked the dragon through the mountains, using all of his skills as a hunter to stay one step ahead of the beast. Finally, after days of stalking his prey, Aaron came face to face with the dragon in its lair. It was a fierce battle, but in the end, Aaron emerged victorious, the dragon's head held high in triumph. Aaron's first dragon hunt was a turning point in his life. He knew that he had found his calling, and he dedicated himself to the life of a dragon hunter. Over the years, Aaron would face many challenges and battles, but he never lost his love for the natural world and his desire to protect it from the dangers that lurked within. Chapter 3. The Dragon Hunter's Code Aaron's success as a dragon hunter did not come without a price. He had seen the devastation caused by these beasts, and he knew that they posed a serious threat to the people of the kingdom. However, he also knew that he had to hunt them responsibly and with respect. Aaron developed a strict code of ethics for himself as a dragon hunter, which he followed throughout his career. The first rule of Aaron's code was that he would never hunt a dragon without cause. He would only hunt dragons that posed a threat to people or livestock, or that were causing significant damage to the environment. Aaron understood that dragons were a vital part of the ecosystem, and he did not want to cause unnecessary harm to these magnificent creatures. The second rule was that Aaron would never take more than he needed. He would only hunt as many dragons as were necessary to protect the people and the land. Aaron believed that every dragon was important, and he would never kill them for sport or profit. The third rule of Aaron's code was that he would always show respect to the dragons he hunted. Aaron knew that these beasts were intelligent and powerful, and he did not want to underestimate them. He would always approach the hunt with caution and respect, and he would always make sure that the dragon died quickly and painlessly. Over time, Aaron's code of ethics became known throughout the kingdom, and he became known as a dragon hunter who could be trusted. Villagers and farmers would call on him when they needed help, and Aaron would always answer the call. He was a true protector of the land, and his code of ethics was an inspiration to all who knew him. Chapter 4. The Dragon Queen As Aaron's reputation as a dragon hunter grew, he began to hear rumors of a dragon queen who ruled over a great kingdom in the mountains. Some said that she was a gentle creature who only wanted to live in peace with her people. Others claimed that she was a tyrant who demanded tribute from the villages in her domain. Aaron was intrigued by the stories of the Dragon Queen, and he knew that he had to find out more. He set out on a journey to the mountains, determined to discover the truth about this mysterious ruler. When Aaron finally reached the Dragon Queen's kingdom, he was amazed by what he saw. The land was beautiful, with lush forests and crystal-clear streams, the dragons who lived there were healthy and well-fed, and they seemed content in their mountain home. Aaron was greeted by the dragon queen herself, 
a magnificent creature with scales as blue as the sky. She welcomed him warmly, and they sat down to talk. Aaron was surprised to find that the Dragon Queen was not a tyrant, but a kind and wise ruler who cared deeply for her people. Over the next few days, Aaron learned about the Dragon Queen's kingdom and the challenges she faced as a leader. He was impressed by her wisdom and her compassion, and he knew that he had found a true ally in his fight against the dragons that threatened the kingdom. Aaron left the Dragon Queen's kingdom with a renewed sense of purpose. He knew that he had found a kindred spirit, and he was determined to work with her to protect the people and the land from harm. Chapter 5. The Dragon's Lair as Aaron continued his work as a dragon hunter, he began to hear rumors of a great dragon that lived in a hidden lair deep in the mountains. This dragon was said to be the strongest and most fearsome of all, with scales as black as night and a breath of fire that could melt steel. Aaron knew that he had to find this dragon and defeat it if he wanted to protect the kingdom from its wrath. He set out on a dangerous journey into the heart of the mountains, searching for any sign of the dragon's lair. After several weeks of travel, Aaron finally found the lair. It was nestled deep in a rocky canyon, surrounded by jagged cliffs and treacherous terrain. Aaron knew that he would have to be careful if he wanted to survive the encounter. He spent several days observing the dragon's movements and learning its patterns. He discovered that the dragon would leave the lair every few days to hunt for food, and that it was most vulnerable during these times. Aaron waited until the dragon had left the lair before making his move. He crept into the lair, his sword drawn, ready to face the beast. The lair was dark and filled with the stench of sulfur, but Aaron pushed on, determined to defeat the dragon and protect the kingdom. Suddenly, he heard a loud roar, and the dragon appeared before him. It was even larger and more terrifying than he had imagined, with eyes that glowed red like hot coals. Aaron knew that he had to act quickly. He dodged the dragon's fiery breath and swung his sword with all his might. The blade struck the dragon's scales, sending sparks flying, but it did not penetrate. The dragon lunged at Aaron, its sharp claws poised to strike. Aaron rolled out of the way and sliced at the dragon's belly. The dragon roared in pain and fury, but Aaron did not back down. The battle raged on for hours, with neither Aaron nor the dragon gaining the upper hand. Aaron was battered and bruised, but he refused to give up. Finally, he saw an opening and struck the dragon's heart with his sword. The dragon let out a final roar and fell to the ground, dead. Aaron emerged from the lair victorious, but he knew that his battle against the dragons was far from over. Chapter 6. The Dragon Hunter's Love As Aaron continued his work as a dragon hunter, he met a beautiful young woman named Isabella. She was the daughter of a wealthy merchant, and Aaron was immediately smitten with her. Despite his dangerous profession, Isabella saw the goodness in Aaron's heart and fell in love with him as well. They spent many happy days together, exploring the countryside and dreaming of a future together. But Aaron knew that his work as a dragon hunter would always be dangerous, and he did not want to put Isabella's life at risk. He tried to push her away, telling her that he could not be with her. Isabella, however, was not easily deterred. She knew that Aaron was the love of her life, and she was willing to stand by him no matter what. One day, when Aaron was on a mission to hunt down a dragon that was terrorizing a nearby village, Isabella decided to follow him. She disguised herself as a peasant and joined the villagers who were fleeing from the dragon. When Aaron saw Isabella among the frightened villagers, he was both angry and terrified. He knew that she could be killed if she stayed, but he also knew that he could not abandon the people who were depending on him. Together, Aaron and Isabella fought the dragon, side by side. They were a formidable team, with Aaron's strength and Isabella's quick thinking. In the end, they were able to slay the dragon and save the village. After the battle, Aaron realized that he could not imagine his life without Isabella by his side. He knew that he had been wrong to try and push her away, and he vowed to never let her go. Chapter 7. Betrayal As Aaron's reputation as a dragon hunter grew, so did the number of people who sought his help. 
he became a trusted ally to the king, who relied on him to protect the kingdom from the dragon's attacks. However, not everyone was happy with Aaron's success. There were those who saw him as a threat to their own power, and they began to plot against him. One day, Aaron received a message from a man claiming to have information about a dragon that was terrorizing a nearby village. Aaron set out to investigate, but when he arrived at the village, he found that there was no dragon. Instead, he was ambushed by a group of armed men. They had been hired by one of Aaron's enemies to kill him and put an end to his dragon hunting days. Aaron fought back with all his might, but he was outnumbered and outmatched. He was captured and taken to a dungeon where he was left to rot. Days turned into weeks, and Aaron began to lose hope. He knew that he would not survive much longer in the dungeon, and he began to accept his fate. But then, he heard a familiar voice outside his cell. It was Isabella, who had learned of his capture and come to rescue him. Together, they fought their way out of the dungeon and fled the kingdom. They knew that they could not stay in a place where Aaron's enemies were so powerful, and they set out on a journey to find a new home. Chapter 8. A New Beginning Aaron and Isabella traveled for many days, searching for a place where they could start over. They faced many challenges along the way, but they never gave up hope. Finally, they came upon a small village nestled in a peaceful valley. The villagers welcomed them with open arms, and Aaron and Isabella decided to make the village their new home. Aaron continued to work as a dragon hunter, but he did so in secret, not wanting to draw attention to himself. Isabella helped him by gathering information and supplies, and together they made a formidable team. As they settled into their new life, Aaron and Isabella fell more deeply in love. They knew that they had found a place where they could be happy and safe, and they cherished every moment together. Chapter 9. The Dragon Hunter's Code Despite the relative peace of their new home, Aaron and Isabella knew that the threat of dragons was always present. Aaron had developed a strict code of conduct for his dragon hunting, and he made sure to follow it at all times. The code included rules such as never killing a dragon unless it posed an immediate threat, and always treating the dragons with respect and honor. Aaron believed that dragons were not simply mindless beasts, but intelligent creatures that deserved to be treated with dignity. Isabella supported Aaron's code, and together they worked to spread the word among other dragon hunters. They knew that if all dragon hunters followed this code, the dragons could be protected and the kingdom could be safe. Chapter 10. The Dragon Queen One day, Aaron and Isabella received a message from a mysterious woman claiming to be the queen of the dragons. The woman asked to meet with Aaron, and Aaron knew that this was an opportunity he could not pass up. He set out on a journey to the mountains, where he met the queen in her lair. The queen was a magnificent creature, with scales that shimmered like jewels and eyes that glowed with an otherworldly intelligence. The queen spoke to Aaron of the plight of the dragons. She told him of the destruction that had been wrought upon their kind by the humans, and of the few dragons that remained in hiding, fearing for their lives. Aaron listened carefully to the queen's words, and he realized that he had been blind to the true nature of the dragons. He had seen them only as threats to the kingdom and had never stopped to consider their own point of view. The queen asked Aaron to help her and her kind to protect them from the humans who sought to destroy them. Aaron agreed, but he knew that it would not be an easy task. Chapter 11. The Dragon's Fury Aaron returned to the village with a heavy heart. He knew that he could not simply turn his back on the queen and her people, but he also knew that if he openly defied the humans, he would put himself and Isabella in grave danger. As he pondered his next move, a dragon attacked the village. It was one of the few remaining dragons in the area, driven mad with fear and rage. Aaron knew that he had to act quickly to stop the dragon before it caused too much damage. He donned his armor and rode out to meet the beast, accompanied by Isabella. The battle was fierce, and both Aaron and Isabella were injured. But in the end, they managed to subdue the dragon without killing it. 
As they tended to their wounds, Aaron realized that this was not the first time he had faced a dragon driven to madness by fear and desperation. He knew that he had to find a way to help the dragons, to give them a safe place to live and thrive. Chapter 12 The Dragon's Lair Aaron set out on a journey to find a new home for the dragons. He searched high and low, traveling to the farthest reaches of the kingdom in search of a place where the dragons could live in peace. Finally, he came upon a hidden valley, surrounded by high mountains and protected by thick forests. It was the perfect place for the dragons to live, and Aaron knew that he had to protect it at all costs. He returned to the village and began to gather his allies. He spoke to the other dragon hunters and convinced them to join him in protecting the valley. He also spoke to the villagers and gained their support. Together, they built a fortress at the entrance to the valley and stationed guards around the clock to protect the dragons within. Chapter 13 The Dragon's Heart Aaron continued to visit the dragons in the valley, building a bond with them that went beyond words. He knew that they were not the mindless beasts he had once thought them to be, but creatures with feelings and emotions just like humans. One day, Aaron met a dragon unlike any he had ever seen before. The dragon was small and delicate, with shimmering scales that changed colors with the light. The dragon spoke to Aaron in a soft, musical voice, and Aaron realized that this was the queen's own daughter. The dragon was the last of her kind, and Aaron knew that he had to protect her at all costs. He took the dragon under his wing and began to raise her as his own. He taught her the ways of the humans, and in turn, she taught him the ways of the dragons. Chapter 14 The Dragon's Legacy Years passed, and Aaron and Isabella grew old together in the village. Aaron had long since retired from dragon hunting, but his legacy lived on. The valley had become a sanctuary for dragons from all over the kingdom, and Aaron's code of conduct had become the standard for all dragon hunters. The dragons were no longer hunted for sport or profit, but were respected and protected. Aaron's legacy was not just in the protection of the dragons, but also in the relationships he had built between humans and dragons. The villagers who once feared and hated the dragons now saw them as valuable allies and friends. Aaron's dragon, the queen's daughter, had grown into a wise and powerful dragon. She had taken on the mantle of leadership and worked tirelessly to protect her kind. Aaron knew that he had done what he could to ensure the survival of the dragons, but he also knew that his time was running out. He had grown old and frail and knew that he would soon pass on. Chapter 15, The Dragon Hunter's Legacy. On his deathbed, Aaron called Isabella and his closest allies to his side. He knew that he had one last task to complete. He asked them to swear an oath to uphold his code of conduct and protect the dragons at all costs. He asked them to teach their children and their children's children the value of the dragons and to ensure that they were never hunted or harmed again. As Aaron took his last breath, he knew that his legacy would live on. The dragons would thrive in the valley and his code of conduct would become a guiding light for all who sought to protect them. Isabella and the other dragon hunters took up Aaron's mantle and ensured that his legacy lived on. The dragons became not just a protected species, but a beloved and respected ally to the humans of the kingdom. Aaron the dragon hunter may have started his journey with hate and fear in his heart, but he ended it with love and compassion. His legacy would be remembered for generations to come as the man who changed the fate of the dragons and brought peace between two seemingly irreconcilable worlds.